Okay, so we looked at how to find the velocity time graph and acceleration time graph from a displacement time graph, so how to get VT and AT if it all were given as an XT graph. Um, what about if we're going the other way around? What if we're given an acceleration time graph and we have to try and work out the other two? Well, it's very, very similar, really, in principle to what, what we did earlier. The important thing, again, to remember is the relationship between them. Well, we know that now um, a VT graph... Sorry. We know that acceleration is equal to the rate of change of velocity with time, which means acceleration is, as we did before, the gradient of the VT graph. So now all I'm going to look at is that I'm going to look at the values of this. Well, this, this value here is negative and constant up until this point. So let me just put uh, my points of interest down quickly. So there we go. There's a point there. That's quite an interesting point there because it goes through the origin. Okay, and that's, that's really it, those, those two main ones. So between this point here and this point, it's constant and negative. So I've got a constant negative gradient. Now, I don't know where to start this graph in terms of the y-axis, so don't worry too much about it. But what I do know is it's constant and negative, the gradient from here to here. Well, that's, that line there is constant and negative. Then what happens? It's still constant and negative, but it decreases until this point when it's zero. So at this point here, at this point here, the gradient of this graph must become zero. And to get there, it has to it starts negative and it continues to get less and less until zero like that. Okay, so that's what it's doing. So this will slope, whoops, there we go, like that. At that point, the gradient becomes it starts to become positive for the first time. So we're not looking, sorry, we're not looking at the gradient of this line here, we're looking at the actual value. So at this point here, it's, the value is zero, therefore this gradient must be zero. From that moment on, this value is positive, because it's above the, uh, the axis, and it's getting bigger. So positive, great, so this means this gradient must be positive, so it starts to slope upwards, and increasing, and what it does is it does that you have to just ignore the x-axis, or the time axis in this case. Don't worry about it at all. It doesn't matter whereabouts this curve is. It could be all below the, uh, below, the, the or below the origin, or it could all be above. You can't really tell, okay, without doing a bit more complicated math. So for sketching graphs, this is fine. Right. Let's look at, so this is our VT graph. Well, what do I know about VT? I know that velocity is the difference in displacement per time. So this gives me the gradient, the velocity is the gradient, rather, of the XT graph. Well, what does it start off at? The value here is positive and high. Positive and high tells me the gradient must be positive and high, so it starts sloping up quite a lot like that. And it gets lower and lower and lower until this point here, which is now a point of interest. At this point here, it goes to zero. So... It's positive, contains, remains positive, but it gets lower. So positive, but decreasing. Positive, but decreasing until it gets to zero there, so it's going to do that. It then becomes negative and gets more and more negative. So more and more negative. So negative and going up. Uh, until this point here. So increase, in fact, until, what am I saying, this point here, it continues to get more and more negative until it reaches a maximum. So more and more negative. So until it reaches the maximum here, so it's a maximum slope there. And then it starts to still negative, but starts to get l lower and lower and lower until it reaches zero again. Zero gradient, that's it, that points to zero there. Therefore, this must have zero gradient. So it continues to get more and more, sorry, less and less negative now until it gets to here. At which point, here it becomes positive and increasing. It starts to slope up like that. Okay? So you can always check as well. Just check the gradient of this one. The gradient here should equal this line. So the gradient starts off high and positive. Yep, good, it's high and positive. Here, zero. Yep, zero there. Here, negative and increasing. Negative and getting further from the axis. Yep, does that. Negative and decreasing. So it starts to get less, less steep until zero again here. Yep, does that. And then starts to get positive again here. Okay, these ones are much, much trickier to do. Um, again, don't worry about whereabouts on the 
axis, on the y-axis it is. Okay?